Hey everybody, it's Laura with Jot and Tittle Typewriters and I have a 1946 Smith Corona Sterling for you today. This is the Speedline version black and if you noticed, the keys look different. Can you see those? So normally this has the glass keys on it, but um, I, I didn't do a ton of research, but I did find one other person who had these kind of keys on there and uh, they said it was a, it's like a metal stamp that's kind of clamped onto the keys. And so um, it is original. You can see the yellowing on it, but somehow they have, um, this is like a metal cap that's been clamped onto the keys for this typewriter. And it is, if you ha um, have some vision loss or you just like larger things, the older you get, the larger things need to be, just saying. Um, it's definitely much easier to read. So they are different. It is unique for sure. Okay, let's move on and let's do our tutorial here. So let's start back here. If you flip this over, you can see this is your margins. So you just drag and set. I like my narrow, let's bring them in. While it's over, you can see here's your paper holder. <clears throat> Voila, looks like my favorite Martian antennas. Anybody old enough here to remember that TV show? Okay, let's see. Um, and then also your carriage release back here, either side. Just pull that in. Nice sounding bell, it's nice and strong. Remember your carriage is only gonna move as far as you have the margin set. So my margins are pretty narrow, so my carriage didn't move very far. This is your paper release. It releases the tension on your paper. We'll show that here in a little bit. And then also your return, here's your return handle. So you advance to the next line. And then this is your line selector, one or two lines. Actually, that's one, this is two. Okay, so I'm gonna move this to the left, pop open the top inside. We'll take a look. If you wanna know where your serial number is, it's right here on the right side, stamped on uh, the, the frame, the metal frame. Um, and then on the left side, this is like your touch control. Um, really, that's a term associated with the Royal Typewriter, but it means the same thing. It just determines how hard these type bars are going to strike your paper. Just set it to your personal preference. Here you'll see we've inserted a universal ribbon. The original metal, metal spools were not with this, as is the case with the majority of the typewriters out there. Um, but the universal ribbon works with so many typewriters. Um, if you have, unless you have a Remington, if you have a Remington, you can forget about using the universal ribbon. Okay. Anyway, when it's time to change it out, they just pop in, pop out, make sure it is threaded properly. So if you need to come back to this video, or if you want to visit the link in the description below, there is a photo that you can bookmark so you can see how to thread your ribbon. Just remember black on top, red on bottom. Now this is so important. When you get to the end of that spool, it doesn't mean the end of your um, ribbon or your ink. There's a lot of ink in there. You reverse that baby and you go back and forth and back and forth until you use up all the ink in your ribbon, which you can do dozens and dozens of times before you need to replace it but do remember to reverse the direction of your ribbon, which is right here. Either way, every time you need to reverse it, just hit that baby. And um, how do you know when you need to reverse it? Well, it'll probably stop on you or it'll get real stiff or the font's gonna get really faint. Anyway, your typewriter's not gonna work the way it should and instead of panicking, go, oh, I need to reverse the direction of my ribbon and you will be good to go most likely. Okay, unless there is something wrong with your typewriter, but 90% of the time it has to do with this little button right here. Okay, over here is your color selector, black on top, red on bottom. I don't know why they put blue. Maybe the type used to be blue. Anyway, this white dot is nothing. Um, maybe it's red, white, and blue because, you know, our flag, whatever. Um, white means stencil. You won't use it. If you have it on here, your typewriter's not going to work very well. So again, if it's not working well, check your ribbon and check to make sure your color selector is firmly on the black or the red. Okay, let's close this. 
and um, oh, this has a tab on it. So I am gonna show you where you set your tabs and that's gonna involve lifting up your little typewriter here and you don't have to lift it up, but I do just so I can show you. These are tab stops right here. So there's a metal bar and then these come off and I bet they haven't been taken off in a long time. And that is a tab key. So where, and there's grooves in this metal bar. So you just put this key wherever you would like to have your tab stop. And then you just, and it is stiff, but it's supposed to be. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six. All six are here. Okay, so let's put this down. And then your tab key. So tab, tab. This is your backspace. Backspace does not erase. It just backspaces so you can type over your mistakes. And then you'll see this button says floating shift. That means, let me just show you because you'll be like, what the heck? Okay, the older typewriters, when you would hit shift, this whole carriage would lift up and down, which is really clunky because when you hit shift, the whole the typewriter just like clunk, clunk. So Smith Corona came out with a floating shift so that when you hit that, the escapement, which is this, is the one that moves, make, making the whole process so much smoother. And voila, it was a big deal way back when. Margin release, we'll show that here in a second. Let's go ahead and do our typing demo. Okay, so I'm gonna take this paper and I'm just gonna set it right here. Bring my paper guide in a little bit. You don't need to press it down, just set it there and then turn your handle. And I, there we go. Some of the, sometimes on these older ones, you just have to kind of put a little pressure on that paper and it'll grab it and bring it around. So you can see that this is uneven and that's where this paper release comes in handy. You just flip this forward. That releases the tension on the paper and that makes sure that it's even and then re-engage. And now we can go back and start our typing. So this was, there's no number one, so you lose, use your lowercase l in place of a one. This is a 1946 Smith Corona Sterling. And so um, these keys with the caps on them, they almost have a little, like a little hump on them. I mean, they don't really have a hump, but I'm used to, if you know the glass keys, they indent. So the fact that these don't indent almost feels like they're raised, which they are. Okay, let's go ahead and keep typing. But the, the um, oh gosh, the space, that you have to press down is there's more there. Um, okay, let's keep going. I can't talk and type at the same time. So I have noticed if you'll see there's like this little scratch here um so this handle there we go oh that's why i'm like this handle was hitting this cover so when i close this hold on when you put it down it it clicked but it needs to click even i didn't click it all the way and it looks like this is was pretty common. So when you use this, for this typewriter anyway, if you get this typewriter, make sure that the cover is fully locked down um, because this is, a, this is a narrow clearance between the return handle and the cover, which it is on all of them. And so if this popped up just a little bit, it's gonna scrape across the top, which it shouldn't. Okay, where was I? Here we go. So um, I'm anxious to do uh, sentences. Okay, 
So this one, this typewriter, because I've done it a couple of times, needs a heavier hand because if you don't press it fully, it advances, but it doesn't imprint the letter. Okay, let's try, I'm gonna keep, that bell says, hey, you're at the end of your line, you need to return, hit the return handle, but I'm gonna keep going so we can test out our margin release. Okay, so it's typing on top of itself instead of just stopping the key action, it stopped the carriage action, but here's the margin release, and you saw that jolt, and so there we go, now you can finish. But you just have to learn how your typewriter responds. I'm gonna do it again. All right, so margin release, lazy. So in this case, since it doesn't stop, it only stops the carriage and it doesn't stop the keys from typing, as soon as you hear that bell, you just need to go ahead and uh, hit the return handle. Okay, let's try the red. It's snowing here at Table Rock Lake today, which is unusual. Interestingly, since we moved from Colorado, we, uh, Colorado Springs, we've had more snow in Missouri than we had had on the west side of Colorado Springs for the last 10 years. Just where we were right next to, we were right there at the base of Pikes Peak and Cheyenne Mountain, and we just did not get snow, and it was very disappointing, but so I'm excited, snow out here. Okay, that had nothing to do with typewriters. So actually this does type pretty well. Um, I was trying to see if it would get into like a flow and it did, it was, at first it was a little, um, I was a little uncertain as I was typing with it. Cause honestly, I sometimes I do a typing test before I go live um, and I hadn't on this one yet. And so um, I was a little uncertain, but as I go, it's really starting to get into a flow and I like that, however, this typewriter needs a sure hand and follow through. So I know I said heavy hand, it kind of needs a heavy hand, but it needs a sure hand, meaning you need to finish your stroke. Um, some typewriters you can kind of just at least hit it part way and it'll, it'll still um, type, but this one, it'll advance the space, but it won't type if you don't follow through all the way down. Um, so sure hand and follow through, it's key to remember this, but I was able, once I started getting going, I was able to find a nice flow with this typewriter. So I think you're really going to like it. It, um, you know, it has its little quirks, you know, like the margin release, um, margin release works, but you may type on top of yourself. So you just gotta, when that bell goes, you gotta return that handle. Um, and just a few little itty bitty quirks, which just add to the character of the typewriter, but mechanically or performance wise, I really like it. It's a, I, I actually can see myself really enjoying writing on this typewriter. So I hope you found this video helpful. Let me know if you have any questions or comments and you all have a blessed day.